Hello, this is going to be me uh, live writing your defund or fund the police essay that you um, are going to be tasked with completing this by the end of this period. So without further ado, let me get into it. Um, so this was something that I had started in um, tutoring. So disregard this, let me delete all this. Right here, I don't know if you can see, but I have numbered uh, different thesis statements that I am going to choose to support. I'm going to try to write two, but if I run out of time, if I think the video is very long, but I'm only going to be writing one. Um, so I'm going to put these in the hat so it doesn't look like I'm rigging the election. You can see I'm mixing this up. I really don't care what I'm going to write, guys, just so you know. I'm going to make sure I am have these flipped around. Okay, so the two essays that I'm going to write are going to be number two and number one. Okay, those are reasonably different. Um, not very different. I think they're kind of almost close to the same vein of argument, but okay. All right, so the first thesis that I'm going to choose to write is number one. Um, so the federal funding for local police departments should be cut because it reduces the role of the state slash local authorities and therefore makes police departments less accountable to these authorities. Okay, first I want to remind you of the prompt, however. So the prompt is you're pretending that you're president of the United States and um, you're a president that cares about constitutional rights. All right, so you want to respect people's constitutional rights you want to ensure that people have the maximum amount of constitutional rights provided to them in the Constitution possible. Activists are increasingly calling, um, are worried about police brutality and are calling on cities and states to defund their police. And so funding for local law enforcement, however, we discussed this in class, um, now increasingly comes from the federal government. So after in the 90s, there was a crime bill, and then after the September 11th terrorist attacks, there's all kinds of grants provided by the federal government that um, provide uh, all kinds of funding um, to local police departments. And then you're tasked with developing an argument on whether the federal funding for local law enforcement should be reduced, modified, or increased. And then you have to use two pieces of evidence from the following foundational documents, so either the Articles of Confederation, Brutus Number 1, Federalist 10, or the Constitution. So uh, pretty hefty. Uh, I will say that this essay um, is inspired by our conversations about federalism last week. Uh, so remember, federalism is the sharing of power between the um, federal government and local governments. Remember, the federal government has certain enumerated powers and implied powers, and the state and local governments have certain um, reserved powers. Um, the Tenth Amendment in the Constitution kind of reaffirms this idea of, um, of federalism. Federalism is a practice that is embedded in our constitution, embedded in our system of government. We also, if you remember the uh, free response uh, question from your unit one exam on Monday, are aware that uh, federalism can produce inequalities, right, across states. You looked at federalism in the context of producing inequalities um, in terms of educational quality, in terms of educational spending, because if different states are responsible for education, obviously different states have um, are, are going to uh, spend differently on education. Some states may have poor citizens and residents and may therefore spend less money on education, um, which was basically your FRQ from uh, Monday. But uh, federalism also can t speak to this issue of inequalities and differences across police departments. Uh, because there are 18,000 police departments in the United States, like I keep saying, this debate about defunding the police department or, um, you know, uh, all these uh, the different or, or funding the police department or, or or what have you, it kind of misses the complexity of this complex problem, right? This complex problem of police brutality, because there are 18,000 police departments in the United States. 
um, several state and local agencies, surely some have different types of cultures in those police departments, uh, different kinds of demographics in those police departments, and then different kind of funding within those police departments themselves, which is the uh, the key to to this essay. So what I mean by different types of funding, like in the documentary, we saw that the Newark Police Department, which um, the Justice Department, the the um, um, had said have engaged in a pattern or practice of unconstitutional violations. So the federal government themselves had said that the New York Police Department um, was committing um, unconstitutional violations. Um, 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 we saw that the New York Police Department seemed heavily underfunded. And then um, police departments like the LAPD, um, the NYPD seem to be uh, substantially more funded. This is probably in part due to the fact that the NYPD has a very good tax base. Um, obviously, Manhattan is comprised of all kinds of rich financial analysts, lawyers, actors, whatever. All these people are paying taxes to their local and state governments and therefore funding a more robust police department as opposed to Newark, New Jersey's police department, um, which um, you know, has, of course, a, a significantly larger portion of poor residents or maybe just not as many wealthy residents as New York does. Um, so you can think of federal funding of police, not necessarily, I think federal funding of police, um, the increase in federal funding of police, the trend itself was more driven by uh, stuff like the 9-11 terrorist attacks, um, persistent uh, fears in American politics, which we'll talk more about when we get into the ideology section, which is unit four, about um, crime. Um, um, American politicians uh, 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 trying to become president of the United States, um, they often use this tough on crime strategy and approach uh, to appeal to voters because that's um, an easy sell. We see that in today's politics as well. Um, um, but um, it was probably also significantly driven by like the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Um, I don't think the federal government was intentionally trying to kind of ameliorate inequalities across state and local governments in terms of uh, budgetary issues. I may be wrong on that. I don't know. Um, so if you want to disprove me, go ahead and disprove me in the comment section. Um, but I think it was more, uh, but it, it certainly could do that, right? Um, so you can imagine that the Newark Police Department could apply for a grant and potentially get more money from the federal government, uh, which has a more extensive tax base and, and more resources than the Newark state um, governments and local government. Okay, so having said that, that's the context in which this debate is had. Um, what I will say is incredibly difficult about the argumentative essay already is that the evidence itself, right, that you could use, you can memorize quick facts about that evidence, and that's fine, right? Memorize quick facts about that evidence. I could be that teacher that does that to you and tells you, memorize this and say, you know what, the explanation part, the reasoning part where you actually explain how that evidence supports your argument, we're not going to work as hard on that one because it's really hard to do. No, I'm not going to be that teacher because next year you're going to be in college and you need to know how to do this. You need to not just memorize, you know, these these types of foundational documents. You need to be able to apply certain elements of those foundational documents to support your argument itself. That's a harder skill to teach, and that's why I'm modeling it to you right now. And you need to be paying attention, pay attention. But I am confident that you guys can do this. I know you're smart. I know you are. Okay. So having said this. We have to start thinking of these pieces of evidence, right, that are provided to us. And evidence in AP government is always going to be a foundational document or some type of concept. Um, we'll talk more about um, concepts later when we get closer to exam day um, uh, or the semester exam. But we have to describe it, right? We have to name, first of all, this is going to be our strategy, name describe only the elements that are going to support our thesis. You can go, you can over describe, that's okay, but there's no need to do that. You're, it's a time test. And then you have to explain, explain how it supports your thesis. So for this thesis, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Federal funding for local police departments should be cut because it reduces the role of state such local authorities and therefore makes police departments less accountable to these authorities. Because 
federal funding. So this thesis statement kind of very much touches on a kind of we need a smaller federal government role in policing. Right, the police should be more accountable to um, local jurisdictions, and there are actually law professors and scholars um, of, of, of uh, criminology that make this argument. This is an argument that they often make about uh, Department of Justice grants in particular. They say that these grants um, reduce accountability for police departments um, for uh, with their local governments and citizens, right? Because um, you wouldn't have to necessarily negotiate with your local government. You wouldn't have to necessarily win over, um, you know, the citizens into thinking that your job that you're performing is, is valuable and therefore you guys need more resources, etc. Um, you would just need to apply for a grant with the Department of Justice to get more money, right? And so in that sense, it can be viewed um, as a way that um, police departments often try to escape accountability. Right, I need to see statistics on this. And again, there's 18,000 police departments in the United States, which makes this essay a little bit more difficult. Um, but um, I think that's a plausible argument. OK, so we can talk, of course, about the Articles of Confederation. I think the Articles of Confederation, the most relevant elements to this, the Articles of Confederation, are probably the fact that there is a no strong national government with ability to tax. I don't think that this is going to help us, right? Because I think in this thesis statement that I'm going to make, and remember, you have to come up with the thesis statement by yourself. But in this thesis statement that I'm making, I want to argue that the federal government should have a smaller role, right? And the reason why I don't think the Articles of Confederation is going to help, because although the federal government was uh, very weak under the Articles of Confederation, um, and they had a weak ability to tax, et cetera. They didn't have a significant tax base, et cetera. So you can imagine that the Articles of Confederation, if it, it were still alive today, um, would you wouldn't really see these uh, the federal government uh, having the ability to dole out huge sums of money and grants to local police departments, um, right? Just because of how the government was structured. Um, but I think it's not going to work for us because people view the Articles of Confederation cynically. They view the Articles of Confederation as a failure, right? And so this would definitely work for an argument that is more um, pro um, increasing federal spending in local and state police. All right, so pause and rewatch that if you if you are like what? Rewatch it and listen to my words. Brutus one though offers an anti-federalist perspective, not an anti-federalism perspective, but Brutus number one is very critical of the Constitution. Remember we read Brutus number one? I remember Mean Girls. Very critical of the Constitution because it says that there's more power in the central government, um, more taxing authority, anything else. It thinks that's dangerous, right? It thinks that is antithetical, meaning opposed to democratic politics. So we can go to Brutus number one and we can go ahead and talk about what's in Brutus number one. So um, anti big government, we can just get more blatant about it. Anti strong central government would lead to tyranny, democracy, and politics should be as local as possible. Remember they said big republics fail, lead to tyranny. Um, and what I mean by democracies and politics should be as local as possible within the context of the policing debate, right? So obviously policing departments are, are, are political, right? So um, a Brutus uh, interpretation of this policing debate might say, well, that should really be handled at the local level, right? And say that people involved at the local level, um, activists, uh, people in the community themselves, they should be given greater um, uh, autonomy and ability to engage and, and reform the police department through their local democratic processes as needed. And so this piece of evidence, I know in my brain, okay, I know what Brutus number one is, 
right? I know some of the elements of Brutus number one. I know the context in which it's written. This is what I am definitely going to use because this is going to support the heck out of my thesis statement. Right, so I'm going to highlight this yellow. I know this is not going to support my thesis statement. I'm going to highlight it red as heck. And then watch me make some magic. So I'm going to bring this here. So naming, that's just really stupid. You just have to say Brutus number one. Just name what you're doing. Then describe, right? You can, so Brutus number one warned about increasing power in a central slash national government. Brutus number one said that could lead to tyranny and democracy and politics should be as localized as possible. That's the description of the evidence. Now the explanation is the hard part. The explanation is always, always, always going to try to explain how this piece of evidence supports my thesis statement. And this is the hard part. This is what is so difficult in this class. It's probably the most difficult skill you will learn in this class. So if you master it within the third week of school, whatever week we are in, you are amazing. You are student of the year. I need to quit because Mr. Diaz did his job well and go back and I don't know what else I would do with my life. I don't know, go to law school maybe. Um, but Brutus one warned about increasing power in the central national government. So now you have to explain how that supports your thesis statement. Now remember you or me in this thesis statement wants to cut federal funding. Cut federal funding. I'm not saying state and I'm not saying state and local funding. Maybe the state and local fund like sh they should step up their game. But I'm saying cut federal funding. And so I'll explain why. The police departments are increasingly funded by the federal government. The police department becomes increasingly unaccountable to the local slash state governments and people. And then I can even put like a dramatic rhetorical questions. Why? I should say. So hard to get state and local funding by respecting citizens' constitutional rights and engaging the local governments when you can apply for federal funding, right? Because there's tons of federal funding available. You can get that specific. The police departments are increasingly funded by the federal government. The police department becomes increasingly unaccountable to state local governments and people. Effectively, the police department becomes less and less a state slash local agency and more and more a federal federal agency in all but name. That's a bit dramatic, but oh, oh well, whatever. So 
Federal funding should therefore be reduced to increase police accountability to citizens. They would have to ask local governments for grants. The big republic Right, and then you could talk about this idea too that like, I, if like the federal government has a role in these police departments and 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 um, distributing funds to these police departments, etc., you could talk about this idea that um, the federal government maybe doesn't necessarily know a lot of what's going on in the ground. Right, the federal government grants that are often given, um, um, you know, relate towards like terrorism issues, etc. But maybe the citizens themselves know what's going on. Maybe the citizens feel like the police force is untrustworthy or they're engaged in a practice of frequently violating people's constitutional rights. Uh, maybe the local government uh, wants reform and wants to make their funding conditional on a certain set of reforms. But if the police department can just apply for a federal grant and get some money uh, from that and rely less and less on local and uh, state funding mechanisms, then they're less and less accountable to local and state funding mechanisms. So anything like that that explains this, explains in essence why you want to cut federal funding specifically, um, you could see how I describe the evidence and then explain how it connects to the thesis. Brilliant. Another element that you could use in the Constitution is the Constitution. So Federalist number 10, um, you can off you can think of it as like the inverse of Brutus number one, right? As almost providing an argument. Um, so this would be very fruitful for my writing of the second thesis statement or for thesis statement number four, I think, um, as well. Um, the Constitution is something that you can take different elements of the Constitution because remember, the Constitution is basically a compromise between anti-federalists and federalists, right? And then boom, out pops the Constitution. And there are federal or there are um, elements that Brutus number one um, likes in the Constitution uh, after the, the Bill of Rights, because remember the Bill of Rights is the kind of anti-federalist elements of the Constitution. Um, and then parts of the Constitution, uh, the Constitution as originally proposed, of course, is supported by federalists. So if I take the Constitution, for example, um, and my argument is for less and less uh, federal activity in the funding of police departments, I might want to talk about um, the Bill of Rights, right, and kind of anti-federalist um, um, thinking. So the Constitution of the United States also provides, you can also talk about like the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution, which is um, um, has been used in recent years. We discussed the Supreme Court court case U.S. versus Lopez um, to actually expand or, or kind of retract the powers of the federal government um, in um, the activities and powers or, or in, in encroaching upon the activities and powers of state and local governments. So also provides a mechanism by which the Constitution of the United States also provides a mechanism provides citizens with rights that Constitution of the United States also provides citizens with rights that governments cannot violate. Those rights become harder to guarantee. Those rights become harder to guarantee if the federal government provides increasing funding to state and local authorities because, all right, let me think of why. So it's become hard to guarantee a federal government provides increasing funding to state and local authorities because, and then this is where you can actually connect it with Brutus number one. As Brutus number one articulated, law 
large republics not possibly represent the interests and concerns of most citizens as effectively as small republics. Local governments are responsive to local people or to a smaller number of citizens. So remember, British number one uses this rhetoric of large republics and small republics. We can, you know, applying the British number one argument to the modern day, we can talk about it with this idea that local governments or state governments um, should have more powers than the federal government. So local governments are responsive to a smaller number of citizens than the current federal government. Therefore, they can more accurately represent the concerns of their citizenry. If the police department is increasingly funded by the federal government, it reduces their accountability to the local government. We don't have to ask local government for more money. Okay. So local governments are responsive to a smaller number of citizens than the current federal government, therefore they can more accurately represent the concerns of their citizenry. If the police department is increasingly funded by the federal government, it reduces their accountability to the local government and I've asked for citizenry. And then make sure you tie it back, therefore federal funding should be cut. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool beans, dude. God, I sound disgusting. Um, next, I want you to do is describe an alternative perspective and refute it. This is really cool because I gave you alternative thesis statements that you can actually think about, right? And so one of the things that you can actually think about is like this one, and then this will allow me to turn it into um, um, this will allow me, and then I'll begin writing this essay. But describe an alternative perspective and refute it. Um, Basically, you can start off with this is some may say that federal funding for local police should continue, but the grant should be conditioned on better police behavior practices that respect constitutional rights. And then um, in this one too, you don't have to necessarily refute arguments, you just have to present an alternative viewpoint. Um, you could concede a bit, you can say, this is also a valid argument. A window for the federal government to guarantee the constitutional rights of the their citizenry. This is also a valid argument and provides a window for the federal government to guarantee the constitutional rights of their citizenry. So some may say the federal funding for local police departments should continue, but the grant should be conditioned on better police behavior slash practices that respect constitutional rights. This is also a valid argument and provides a window for the federal government to guarantee the constitutional rights of their citizenry. You can even go off on this too. Um, so this would be an example of not necessarily refuting one. Um, I recommend just refuting it and saying, well, this is a dumb argument because mine is better. Um, but also too, you can also make a concession as well and say, um, this is also valid. 
I've been told that this is going to be modified in your AP test, so I'm awaiting updates on this and that this point may actually not be included, but we're just still going to practice doing it for whatever reason. We're not going to do evidence three um, just because uh, I don't have time, but you certainly can feel free to do evidence three. Look at some of the cool links that I gave you in the description if you so want. All right, so cool. That's an example of that. And then I think I was going to do, what was it? Yeah, this one. Argument number two. So again, you can apply these foundational documents to support your argument. Remember, I know some of you really like to go off on like your opinions and you really like to demonstrate uh, like your knowledge about the policing subject. And yes, that part of that needs to be there, right? To make this an effective essay, but the bulk of it should be like a description of what's in those documents themselves and explaining how you're going to use that evidence that I give you to um, those foundational documents to support your thesis statement. So make sure you, that's the bulk of this intellectual exercise. But here you can see federal funding for local police departments should continue, but the grant should be conditioned on better police behavior, so as practices that respect constitutional rights. All right, so this one is going to be, wow, this one's going to be difficult. Um, but this one is actually something where I could actually manipulate Articles of Confederation in a certain way. I could really manipulate any of these documents in a certain way. I don't like the word manipulate because then it suggests that you're being um, not very scholarly or intellectual about this, um, but I can apply some of the elements of those of those pieces of evidence to support this thesis statement. Okay, so hmm, which to choose from? Let me think. I think I really like this idea of factions distilling tyranny. And so this is the idea that big republic leads to avoiding tyranny. And remember, tyranny means abuse of power, and obviously um, that's relevant for the policing debate. Um, I think that I can make this work, yeah. I definitely do think that this is gonna be what I'm gonna use. Um, so, I name it in Federalist number 10. Madison says that a big republic, and you can even say that this is contrary to what is articulated in Brutus number, number one, is best for avoiding tyranny. Madison suggests that a big public is less beholden to um, factions and the self, the petty self interests of people. And um, so he says this, and I have to probably explain the logic a bit more. Madison says that in a large republic, people must, or factions must compete in ever larger circles. And um, so in Federalist number 10, Madison says that a big republic is best for avoiding tyranny. Madison suggests that a big republic is less beholden to factions and the petty self-interest of people. Madison says that in a large republic, factions must compete in ever larger um, arenas of competition. And therefore, their power is distilled. 
So what makes this argument really, really powerful is that it, you can kind of see it in the policing debate in respect to police unions. So right, police unions are actually very powerful forces um, in um, um, kind of authoritarian reform efforts with local governments, um, et cetera. They're also very powerful forces on the national stage for thwarting uh, reform efforts in some respects of police departments, but um, less powerful because as Madison suggests, there's they have to compete against ever uh, increasing larger factions and groups of people that can ally with other groups of people. Maybe this comes in the form of like Black Lives Matter activists allying with, um, let's see, let's think of it. Uh, the ACLU or like all these other types of legal funds like the NAACP um, to really kind of uh, check the power of police unions, right? Because they have to compete against ever, ever larger interests, et cetera, um, that their um, federal policing policy can in theory um, uh, um, be um, more prone to protecting the rights of citizens than local policing policies are. If that doesn't make sense, message me now, like take time to message me. So Madison says that a larger public factions must compete in ever larger arenas of competition and therefore their power is distilled. But now we have to apply this because we're describing the evidence that we see. The explanation point is the hardest, right? That's the most important though. I believe you can do it. I believe in you. So explain this. So federal funding for local police departments should continue, but the grant should be conditioned on better police behavior. So we can then say, if police, we can name them specifically, or have to compete against more factions than they might have at the local level, their political power is reduced and federal policy making. Therefore, police grants can police unions have to compete against more and more factions, uh, then they might they might have at the local level their political is reduced in federal policy making. mechanism for police departments than local and state governments that are more likely beholden to police unions and other factions. Effectively, remember we talked about police unions before and how they can be um, good and then how also they can thwart reform efforts. Therefore, federal police grants can be a sensible funding mechanism for police departments and local and state governments that are more likely well. Stipulations and conditions on policing are more likely to come from the federal government. Um, cool. We can also use the Constitution and then just pick elements of the Constitution um, as well. Um, I'm going to try to use the Articles of Confederation to make the case. Um, so I'm going to put it here. 
in the Articles of Confederation, there was no strong national government. With taxing power, and therefore there was inequalities across states in terms of law and order, slash, or in terms of, let's see. Funding for law and order, right? So in Articles of Confederation, there was no strong national government with taxing power, and therefore there was inequalities across states in terms of funding for law and order. So you can kind of see how I'm about to apply this uh, concept. Federation show that anarchy, just chaos, can arise if the federal government doesn't have an active role in bankrolling law and order, slash public safety, etc. Um, such as what happened with Shay's rebellion. So you can see right here how that's an explanation of why, again, um, your argument right here, why the federal government, federal funding for local police departments should continue, but the grant should be conditioned on better police behavior, et cetera. Um, you can also, this is more, this piece of evidence is more supportive of the first part of this thesis statement. This piece of evidence is more supported by this, or, or more supports the second part of this thesis statement. You can try to support both, but again, you don't have to, right? Um, it's all about taking elements of these um, pieces of evidence and um, um, trying to make them speak to your um, prompt. I hope this was effective. If this wasn't effective, then maybe I need to quit. Um, but yeah, um, definitely reach out to me. This was a longer video than I anticipated, so I'm definitely going to probably um, uh, provide you with timestamps in the description, so that way you can quickly identify uh, what you actually need to know for class. All right, bye.